My name is Nadia Smirnova Miro. And I'm a former nuclear physicist. And I'm an astrologer as well. Elena Butkina has invited me to speak in front of Oyster Bay Power Squadron, Sagamore Yacht Club, Long Island, New York. The lecture is called Celestial Navigation and Astrology, even though it's about physics of astrology. Nautical theme and celestial navigation will make it easier for the boat owners to relate to what I'm speaking about. Preparing for this lecture, I had to learn a little bit about celestial navigation. It was fun. <laughs> I learned about sextant and nautical almanac, interesting, very interesting stuff. Celestial navigation in astrology, just the word celestial navigation is just amazing combination. It's navigation by means of celestial bodies. I noticed as I was studying celestial navigation that they're very, very similar. They use uh, the same, basically almost identical books. Uh, nautical almanac is almost identical to astrological ephemeris. My question is, would you be able to live without celestial navigation if you're a sailor? And uh, of course, these days you would because you would use GPS. You don't have to know sextant or nautical almanac. You can just use GPS. But if you do know, a celestial navigation that you would feel more secure in case your GPS fails. You guys all know what celestial navigation is, right? I was wondering if anybody would want to tell um, a couple of my friends who don't. No? No? Okay, so I'm going to tell yeah, you guys what it is. Calculate. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, um, I teach uh, the basic and advanced celestial navigations. If you imagine a lighthouse, and that you are looking at a lighthouse from a distance because that's what the nautical almanac will tell you is where that celestial body is and you think of that as a lighthouse so that you're measuring the angle on 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 the water between the horizon and the top and the celestial body or the top of the lighthouse Fantastic, yes. So basically, for my friends, uh, celestial navigation is is the way to uh, for a sailor to find its own position by measuring the angle between the horizon and a, any celestial body, which could be the sun, the moon, a planet, or a star. It's called also astro navigation, and I also learned that in space program, you know, shuttles, they use celestial navigation as well, which is interesting. So the similarities are, is the use of celestial bodies, the sun, the moon, the planets, fixed stars, first point of Aries, declinations, Greenwich hour, and angles. Uh, nautical almanac, as I mentioned, uh, is um, almost identical to astrological ephemeris, and they both guide us on our path. Now the differences are very, very interesting where a sailor is looking at the stars just as reference points. Astrologer goes deeper. Astrologer studies the planetary position and translates it into a person's life. So it's a deeper understanding of reality. Astrology also has predictive ability. Astrology gives you broader navigation, so to speak. So when celestial navigation, you only look in at the position of your own boat. With astrology, you can not only navigate your own boat, you can also look at the lifeboats of your friends, relatives, loved ones. You can also check into political and economical predictions. Astrology interpretations have to do with people, businesses, countries, and their birth, events, experiences, life paths, etc. Astrologers study major uh, historical events. For example, we just had a hundred years since Titanic sank, and the question is, could the disaster be avoided if uh, back in the day the owners of Titanic, White Star Line Company, uh, took astrological considerations into account? Well, they didn't, but these days astrologers study uh, Titanic charts, and it's very obvious to any astrologer, have they done a chart for the trip of the Titanic? Have they done a chart for the captain uh, of Titanic? Uh, they could have seen that the disaster is inevitable. 
and they probably could have avoided it if they wanted to. Respectable people uh, used astrology plenty in the history. Our founding fathers respected astrology. Benjamin Franklin was an astrologer himself. Uh, he published poor Richard Almanac that was filled with astrological data. And he used astrology to select the date to sign the Declaration of Independence. And it's a common knowledge that presidents use astrology. And famous founders of modern astronomy, mathematics, physics, and psychology were into astrology, like Nicholas Copernicus, Galilei Galilei, Kepler, uh, Newton, and Young, a founder of psychology. Why a lot of people find astrology very useful? Uh, primarily, it's because of a predictive ability of astrology. Any science that we have these days focuses on finding a way to predict things. Like um, medicine, for example, doctors would know the symptoms and once they know the symptoms, they can predict the development of your disease and the outcome. If you do or do not take medicine and physics, if you know the initial uh, mass, velocity, of direction of the ball, etc., then you can actually calculate the trajectory. In biology, if you have a seed of a certain plant and you plant it, then you know pretty much what's going to grow out of it, that particular plant and no other. In chemistry, if you mix certain chemicals, you know what kind of chemical reaction is going to be. So basically, in any science, you develop rules and how to predict certain outcome. That's what the science is all about. It's about finding a way to predict things. The knowledge of astrology allows people predict development of human life, growth of a company, ups and downs of stock market, problems in marriage, success of a venture or a trip. Uh, it's the rules of astrology that basically raises a question mark for skeptics. And now we have arrived to physics of astrology my favorite subject and my specialty. Uh, is astrology science, art, or religion, or superstition? And what is the physical mechanism by which celestial bodies influence our life? And can astrology predict everything? Those are main three questions that I'm trying to answer for everyone. And those are main questions about astrology. Astrology is science. Uh, that's what I'm telling you, and that's what a lot of uh, scientists basically these days are finding. Coming from definition of science, science is systematized knowledge stated in the form of laws and rules, which can be proven empirically. And it's about empirical proof that we mostly talk because uh, astrology is systematized knowledge stated in the form of laws and rules, but cannot be proven empirically that's the question. To prove it empirically, we use a scientific method. And scientific method, uh, there is a definition from Wikipedia there, refers to a body of techniques uh, for investigating phenomena, acquiring new knowledge, or correcting and integrating previous knowledge. So based on those scientific methods, uh, can we prove that astrology is science? And yes, we can. Uh, using those scientific methods, ex uh, which is two of them, experiment and statistic analysis. A lot of astrologers do show that astrology is a science. There is plenty of statistical analysis done by astrologers in different fields, in medicine and real estate, um, sports, like any field you take, stock market, and there is a lot of statistical evidence. As far as experiment, that gets interesting because, you know, can you experiment with the moon, with the sun, with planets? What you could do is you could um, measure things, which is also scientific um, method. And what uh, physicists do, they measure uh, the gravity of the moon, and they do show that the moon affects um, uh, moon causes tides in the ocean. You're all familiar with um, tides. Physical qualities of celestial bodies. Gravity and magnetism. We all know that celestial bodies have physical qualities as size, mass, density, temperature, magnetic field, as well as behavior patterns. 
which includes spinning around its own axis, orbiting around the sun. So those are physical qualities. Now, what do they have to do with astrology? Let's look at moon tides. This is a very cute picture that shows uh, the moon, new moon, full moon, and uh, other moon phases. And you can see Earth, and you can see what, what's happening with the ocean. This is uh, a picture from a scientific website. It's a great illustration. So if you imagine yourself right in the middle there with the Earth, and we all know that we humans have 90% of our bodies are liquid, basically. We contain a lot of water. So if a group of us will be right there with the ocean, we picture ourselves, then there is no doubt that we are affected by the moon and we also part of those tides. What scientists also measured is that um, they measured the tides in the atmosphere and uh, since the moon affects the ocean and the atmosphere and just from the Newton's law, the moon will affect everything else with its gravity. It's obvious. It's out there, out in the open, which means it also will affect us. Now I notice there on the right side of it, where it's a full moon. Yes. It seems to me, where it might have a stop right, right? It seems to me that the blue, I guess that would be what? The water? Yeah, it's exaggerated a little bit, but it is. Okay. Yes. So, but then when it reaches on the other side, which is a full moon, it's still the same. Well, it's. Uh, I mean, wouldn't it be? Wouldn't it be like? But the moon does have a lot to do with the ocean rising and going. So basically, down. the moon has one of the cycles is daily. The moon comes up and goes down. The moon comes up and goes down. Right. One of the cycles is daily. Right. And another cycle is you know, the cycle of the sun and the moon uh, relative position against us, like the cycle of the moon phases, so to speak. And it's basically has to do with uh, both. Um, it's a combination picture. New moon and full moon, this is a monthly cycle Oh, okay. But nice. we also have a daily cycle, right. tidal daily cycle. Oh. So it's a complicated picture with the gravity. Uh, but it seems to me that the, that the water is rising only on one particular side of the planet. It's just an example. So basically, uh, what happens with the moon and its gravity and the cyclic motion of the moon is we affected uh, by the gravitational wave of the moon. It's a gravitational wave, that's what we're experiencing. If we then understand that uh, the rest of the celestial bodies have a lot more gravity than moon does, and it also affects us, then we can understand that we are living in the ocean of various waves coming from different celestial bodies. They all have different waves, and they all have, each wave has a, its own frequency. For example, a moon uh, has a, a frequency one cycle per month, one of, one of its frequencies. The frequency of the Sun, Mercury, and Venus is one cycle per, per year. Mars is one cycle per two years. Jupiter, one cycle per, per 12 years. So those are all frequencies of the celestial bodies, of their effect, gravitational effect on us. And so forth, and the Pluto cycle is one cycle per 248 years.